Welcome to the Plate Story Podcast. I'm Trista Polo from IWokeUpAwesome.com, and I am your host. In this podcast, we hear fascinating stories behind vanity license plates all around the country. We also get to know a little bit about the drivers behind those plates. Today's guest is Diana Kaidone from Monroe, New York. After searching for over a year for her dream car, she chose her plate to reflect the car's restored beauty and power. Let's hear Diana's story and the story of Fine Bird. Welcome, Diana, to the Plate Story podcast. We have Diana Kaidone, and she has a very cool license plate that goes with a very cool car. The license plate is Fine Bird, and it's on her 1969 Red Firebird. Welcome, Diana. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm so excited. So I actually found you through a Facebook post, and I asked if anybody knew somebody with a vanity plate, and you tagged your car photo to the pot, the post, and I thought, ooh, that's very cool. I want to know about that. <laughs> so tell me about your license plate and the story behind it, and I'd love to hear the story behind you having such a beautiful car as well. Thank you. I, uh, my husband and I went on a search for about a year looking for a 1969 Firebird. That was my dream car, and my husband uh, and I looked for about a year. We traversed most of the Northeast. We went to Maine. We went to Maryland, Ohio, Pennsylvania, looking at different cars, and just none of them happened to be the right one. And strangely enough, after over a year of searching, we found one in my hometown of Monroe. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> three blocks away from where I grew up. Wow. And, uh, we were there within the hour with truck and trailer, and she came home that very night. Wow. The last place you look was right in your backyard. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. We searched for her and we found her and um, she had a lot of potential. She wasn't perfect. She is, after all, she was about 45 years old then. I got her about six, seven years ago. And uh, I knew she was going to have a lot of potential once we did all the work that she needed. So I put a a cool name on her. She called her Fine Bird. Yes. And she is fine. So you're telling me that what I saw the picture of is after you guys restored her? Yes. She went through, we've actually restored every single system in this car. I redid the interior myself. We just put a new motor in it this last year. Um, We've done everything from body to paint, the glass, the rims, everything, anything you can come through, we've, we've redone on this car. So she's, uh, she's been redone soup to nuts. Wow. And how long did that all, whole process take you? It's a never-ending process on the car. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, do you get people asking you about your car and the plate? People, strangely enough, when we're out, always ask my husband about the car. And he always says, nope, go ask her. It's her car. So it's, uh, it's always kind of fun. That he points them in my direction. <laughs> so people assume because it's a beautiful antique car that he's the one to ask. They see muscle cars and they think guys. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's a little bit fun. It's a little fun. <laughs> now, is he into muscle cars as well? My husband's actually a professional mechanic and he's had a number of hot rods, muscle cars, tuner cars in his life. And, uh, this has definitely been a fun project working on it with him, um, oh, just great. going through everything. Yeah, it's, it's been a really fun project. Um, we just did a motor this year. We just threw a 600 horsepower motor in it this year. So it's, it's interesting. Very cool. And have you always loved muscle cars, antique cars? Uh, my family is actually a racing family. My grandfather is Andy Bloy of Simonek Automotive. He's mm. in the Drag Times Hall of Fame. Wow. So he's a dragster builder. Um, so he's built top fuel cars for Gartlets, Force, you know, all the likes of the famous top fuelers. So we've, um, I've grown up in an engine shop doing high-performance automotive. And uh, he actually ran a Pontiac car in the 90s. So he ran a funny car. Um, so it's it's just been a way of life. My mother's got a Pontiac. My grandfather's run Pontiacs. And uh, this was always a car. This is a car I always wanted. That's great. It's in your blood. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's great. Now, I assume it's on the road. So where would we see you typically driving it around? Well, with the amount of horsepower we put into it and the um, gearing and transmission combo, she's not really a highway car. 
Uh, so you'll see me, you know, around lower Orange County. I don't go too far on the highway with her just because okay. it's, it's old. It's 50 years old. It's got no air conditioning. Mm. You know, it's, it's not, not a friendly highway car, but she's very quick around town. So, you know, Monroe, Chester, Harriman, Washingtonville, you know, this general area of Orange County. If I take her out of the area, we put her up on a trailer just to avoid the wear and tear of bringing her up to Lake George or to Carlisle or any of the big meets that area. Oh, sure. So you do have her at meets. Tell me a little about what um, goes into preparing for a meet. Cleaning. Lots and lots of cleaning. You don't think they get dirty just sitting covered in a garage, but they do. Lots of polishing, cleaning, waxing, everything you can think of. Wow. And how many meets would you say you guys do a year with her? We try to do at least a weekly cruise or car show um, from all season, from you know April to October. Uh, we try to get out to maybe three or four big meets a year, be it Carlisle or Adirondack Nationals at Lake George, or you know even down uh, the Jersey Shore. There's some pretty big meets down there. We try to get to two or three of them a year, but that's a multi-day trip, truck and trailer, hotel room, the whole nine. Oh wow, yeah, that's a big deal then. Well, it sounds like you have plenty of time that you get to spend with her and with other people that have similar kinds of cars. If you had to pick a second favorite, would you have given up at, at some point and chosen a different style of car? No, um, I do have a second favorite car, which I hope to purchase before they get worth too much. And that's a second generation G-Body, which would be like an 80s Monte Carlo. I okay. really love the, uh, the 80s, you know, 84, 85, 86 Monte Carlos. Um, I had one when I was uh, in high school that was, you know, beat up, but I'm hoping to get an SS version and restore it as well. So I'll have, hopefully, eventually I'll have the Firebird and a Monte. Well, that's awesome. Is there anything else you want us to know about your love of cars before we move on to another topic? What's, um, you know, really cool is I get to do this with my family. My mom's got a 69 Tempest, which she still drives. And um, wow. I'm involved with car shows, car club stuff. So it's, it's a lot of fun. That's great. I love that your whole family's involved. And you said that your grandfather was in the Hall of Fame. Um, is he still with us? Is he still alive? He is. He actually was. Um, he lived in Clifton, New Jersey, and his shop was in Patterson, New Jersey, in Gasoline Alley for about 50 years. He just retired a couple of years ago. And he's off to Michigan, and he's running um, stock cars out there right now. He's 82 years old running stock cars in Michigan. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> so he still has plenty of uh, – so that's probably his retirement then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He spent some time uh, early in his when he just retired working for Carroll Superchargers, doing design work for them. He's got a friend who's got a Cobra outfit out in Lafayette. So he, he bounces around doing design work and um, – consulting with different high performance, high end shops. So now he's just playing around with uh, just stock cars, just something to tinker with. So he's not bored. I love it. I love it. That's great. Now, this is not what you do. Obviously, this is a love, a hobby, a passion. What do you do professionally? I am actually an insurance agent. And uh, I'm actually one of the top Haggerty insurance agents in the country. Haggerty is insurance for classic cars. Oh, wow. uh, my office is right in Washingtonville. I work at Quick Insurance. So uh, it's pretty cool that I actually get to do cars all day, classic cars, uh, modern muscle cars, all those kind of cars all day for my work. Well, that's great. I didn't realize, although it makes sense now that you say it, that a classic car would need a specific type of insurance. What kinds of things does someone who's thinking about having a classic car need to consider when it comes to the insurance coverage? Well, when it comes to insurance coverage on specialty cars, be it a modern muscle car like a Viper or a Lingafelter Camaro or even a classic car, some of the Model A's, um, you know, thing, just different muscle cars of the different eras, is that regular insurance policies will give you blue book value, which is on those cars, it's usually scrap weight, which is awful because they're wow. pieces of living history. They're artwork. Yeah. Um, classic car policies don't do that. They appreciate that the car is worth much more than just the sum of its parts. 
and they give you the value that the car is actually worth. My car is currently insured for $45,000. Wow. And they don't negotiate it after the fact if something happens to your car and try to nickel and dime you like a normal policy would. Haggerty's got something called an agreed value policy. Once you agree that the car is worth 40 or 50 grand or whatever it is you decide, that's its value. That's what you get paid. So it's, it's specialty insurance for specialty vehicles. But how is the value determined um, since there's not really a, a lot of comparable cars on the road that you probably could compare it to, right? Typically, um, a good insurance agent like myself knows what the market's going for. You can watch Barrett Jackson and get an idea. You can watch Meekum, get an idea. You can see what different cars of the same year, make, and model are going for in similar condition across the country and get a pretty good estimate. Haggerty also has a very cool estimator tool to give you a ballpark that you can then tweak to make sure it's um, appropriate for your specific vehicle, which is kind of neat. If somebody has a classic car and they want to talk to an expert on insuring it, how would they find you? They can give me a call at Quick Insurance right on Main Street in Washingtonville. We're across from the Moffett Library. My office um, website is cquickinsurance.com. And you can check out, um, you know, we have a whole page dedicated to our classic and muscle cars. That sounds like the sort of thing that not every insurance company does. It's a specialty. Yeah. Um, most insurance companies do not have someone who's active in car culture because it is. It's a culture. It's uh, not like driving your sedan every day. You don't hang out and talk about your sedan with people on the weekends. It's a culture. It's a <laughs> yeah. whole cultural thing. So it's um it's very cool to have somebody in the car culture in the industry because they can talk to someone who knows exactly what they're talking about when they use car terms because it's its own little secret language of cars. Yes, for sure. And I hope that I haven't stepped on any toes not being in that culture in this conversation. <laughs> oh, not at all. Okay, good, good. I am curious about the gas mileage for an antique car. You know, people are so concerned these days with hybrids and um, gas mileage. What I mean, it's not on the road all the time, but what kind of gas mileage does it get? Is that even something you worry about? Typically, anybody with a classic car, they're not talking about miles per um gallon. They're talking about smiles per mile. They really care about enjoying the car. They don't drive them every day. They may only drive them one day a week and they may only drive them four or five miles at that point. Mm. So it's not like they're going through a huge amount of fuel. My car is getting single digits. Other cars are getting 20 miles a gallon. It just depends on how they were built. Mm -hmm. um, some of the older cars weigh a lot less than the new cars. New cars have lots of safety features, which make them really heavy. Some of these old cars, they they're just a lot lighter and you'd be surprised that they actually do pretty good. I love that smiles per mile instead of miles to the gallon. It's not about efficiency. It's about love, love of the car, the culture, the history. Um, they're really just living, rolling pieces of artwork from a bygone era. So you're really more thinking about it from like an artwork standpoint, from a historical standpoint, mm. and not necessarily a utilitarian standpoint. You're not going to take your 55 Chevy pickup and go get hay or plywood with it. It's not, you know, not something you're going to do with your, you know, 60 year old, perfectly restored truck. Yes. It's really more about that era, the nostalgia, you know, it's art. It's, it's American art, which is really great. I love that. Is there anything else that you would like to share before we wrap up? I would love to just share that I have a car show coming up. Great. On June 14th, it's going to be at the Orange County Fire Training Center in New Hampton, which is just near Goshen. This is our fourth year running this car show. It's an all years, all makes car show, and it is to benefit the Orange County Law Enforcement Memorial Wall. We've given almost $10,000 um, in the last three years already to help put names of fallen officers on the memorial wall. And we're you know, we had 150 cars each year so far. We've got tons of space. We're going to have food trucks this year. We had canine police demos. It's always been an awesome time, and it's for a really good cause. So we'd love to just get that out there June 14th at the Orange County Fire Training Center. That's great. Now, this is a national podcast, so we're talking about Orange County, New York, and the Hudson Valley. And is there a website or a Facebook page that we should be on to get the specifics? Yes, you can visit our office Facebook page at cquickinsurance.com. And there is actually a tab for the car show with some um, pictures from 
uh, the last couple of years shows, some videos from some of the big car clubs rolling in, the Mopar guys rolled in, the Mustang clubs came in, and um, you know you can check out the last couple of years. It's a good time, and it's a really great cause. That's great. Now I'll just turn the tables on me um, and see if you have any question that you'd like to ask me before we end. I have a question. You had talked about vanity plates. What is your vanity plate? Mm, good question. So my current vanity plate is Plate Story, which is the name of the podcast. And what's really funny about that is I had the idea for the podcast and then I printed marketing materials and I got very concerned about handing them out because I realized the marketing material had Plate Story, but my license plate didn't. I checked the New York State DMV search machine and it was luckily available. I didn't even check that first. I probably should have. And I quickly registered it so that once I started handing out the marketing material, somebody couldn't go and grab it. It's kind of like a URL. You know, if you're starting a business, you better make sure that the website address is available before you register it with the uh, business associations. I'm glad that it was available. That's good. <laughs> Me too. Um, it's PL with a number eight. And I just love <clears throat> when you use numbers to represent letters, which is what you did on yours as well. Yes, yes. Actually, New York State has a rule that you have to have a number in the plate. So you, that satisfies their rule. I did not know that. New York State also is only one of two states that allows eight characters. So we can be a lot more creative in our state. Yes, we can. <laughs> awesome. Well, Diana, thank you so much for being on Plate Story Podcast, hearing about everything you got to share about your fabulous car and the community that you're part of. It really, um, it was really nice to hear because it's not a, a community that I am part of. So I got to learn about that world a little bit from you. And I really appreciate that. Of course, anytime. All right, thanks. Have a good day. You too. Thanks for joining us for today's episode of the Plate Story Podcast. If you want to keep your car looking and running great, check out our partner, AutoWorks. Their plant-based cleaning line is effective and safe for your car. Plus, the oil additive could extend her life and keep her purring for years to come. If you would like to nominate the owner of a license plate, including you, or visit any of our sponsors, come and see us at platestory.com. That's P-L number eight story.com and give us the details. I'm Trista Polo, wishing you well on the road to your next adventure. <laughs>